New England has all sorts of amusement parks, major thrill parks, charming family parks, seaside parks, and cute kids parks. With all of them within a few hours of me, I regularly visit a majority of these parks every year. In this video, I will count down my favorite amusement parks in all of New England. Before starting this countdown, I want to note that there is one park I have never visited in New England, and that's Ocean Beach Park. This park has limited hours and an amusement section consisting of just a few flat rides and kiddie rides. I also want to note that this countdown will only include the region's operating amusement parks. New England has lost a lot of amusement parks over the past three to four decades, including a lot of its seaside parks, many of which closed before I was even born. I will be ranking every other amusement park in New England overall and in four major categories, roller coasters, non-coasters, atmosphere, and operations. Starting off this list is number 11 in Atlantic Beach Park. At Rhode Island is the smallest state, so it's only fitting their only remaining amusement park is equally microscopic. When you look at the website for Atlantic Beach Park, you see images of kitty coasters, ferris wheels, bumper cars, and a carousel. Yet when I visited in 2018, only one of those rides was there, and that would be the carousel. This historic 1915 Herschel Spellman carousel is the only reason to visit this park. The carousel is a beauty, housed inside a pavilion, but the outdoor area leaves much to be desired. You just have two kiddie rides plopped down in an old parking lot. The outdoor area felt like an abandoned carnival that hadn't been entirely packed up. It was dead and felt eerie. Number 10, York's Wild Kingdom. Half zoo, half amusement park, York's Wild Kingdom has a unique ride lineup. The amusement side is rather small, but it includes three walkthroughs, including the best two funhouses in New England. You have the Jungle Funhouse, a long funhouse with a few gags and several cheap sites. And then you have the Persian Camel Funhouse, a shorter one with a rare sliding staircase. But the park's signature ride is their Eli Bridge Ferris Wheel. It's not overly tall, but it's tall enough to give beautiful views of York Beach. And this is the fastest Ferris wheel I have ever ridden. I actually get a few butterflies in my stomach going over the top. That's how fast it goes. The rest of the park's offerings are a mix of spinning flat rides and kitty rides, which includes the Wacky Mouse Kitty Coaster. Even though this park is a minute or two walk from the ocean, the park is extremely well shaded. This is also one of the rare parks in New England with free admission, and crowds are never an issue here. Just know this park has a shorter season and shorter hours than the most of the area's other parks. Number 9, Edaville Family Theme Park. Built around the historic Edaville Railroad, a heritage railroad circling a large cranberry bog, Edaville had some tough times in the 1990s and early 2000s. In fact, the park was closed for several years. But the park was revitalized in 2015 with the addition of Thomas Land USA. This sprawling kids area themed to Thomas the Tank Engine is considerably larger than the Kennywood Thomas Town or the former Thomas areas at the Six Flags parks. And the park added a Thomas lead car to their prized train ride. Beyond that, Edaville has some common flat rides and a long dinosaur walk through the woods, which interestingly includes the remnants of their old kiddie coaster from the 1980s. Edaville does have two operating kiddie coasters that were both added in 2015. That same year, they also assembled Curse Splash, the unique Myler water coaster that formerly operated at the Washington State Fair. However, Curse Splash has sat idle for five years, so I'm doubtful it'll ever open at this point. I hope it does because it would give the park a nice big thrill ride, but I really doubt it was going to open. Edaville is a bit pricey for adults, but it's very popular among kids and it has a beautiful Christmas event every year. Number 8, Palace Playland. Located next to Old Orchard Beach, Palace Playland is a dense little park. Palace Playland looks and feels like a permanent carnival. That's especially true since the park regularly relocates rides within the park and cycles attractions out because they're extremely pressed for space. The star attraction is the new for 2018 Sea Viper, a solid Preston coaster and it has been a major hit for the park. It is the only ride in the park that ever has any sort of weight. And until Sea Viper opened, I never once saw any lines of this park in my two decades visiting. 
Beyond Sea Viper, you have one of the strongest flat ride lineups in all of New England, highlighted by the disorienting power surge, the airtime inducing adrenaline frisbee, and Drop Zone, a short drop tower with a long cycle. You also have a compact log flume and a ferris wheel giving breathtaking views of the beach. In fact, many of the park's attractions give great views of Old Orchard Beach. Palace Playland doesn't have the longest season, but the park may have the longest hours in the region. Because of its location in a tourist area, the park stays open as long as customers keep coming in. It's not uncommon to see them still running rides as late as midnight on weekends. Number 7. Quasi Like Edaville, this is another park that has performed a complete 180 in the past decade. When I visited Quasi as a kid, it felt very run down. And it was a shame because it was a heavily wooded park with a picturesque setting on Lake Quasipog. But over the past decade, Quasi has done an incredible job beautifying the park. Flashy new rides replaced aging rides. Rides that remained were given fresh coats of paint. And despite the park having a strict height restriction of just 35 feet, the park has added decent sized water park, a few thrilling flat rides, most notably Frantic, the inverting frisbee, and one of the better roller coasters in New England in Wooden Warrior. This was the first Junior Gravity Group wooden coaster, and it took the industry by storm. Wooden Warrior stands just 32 feet tall, but it has some really surprising airtime while providing a glass smooth ride. Wooden Warrior is the main reason I visit Quasi, but it's very easy to ride a ton of rides in a short time. The park staff is friendly and very efficient. And there are many admission options, full day wristbands, twilight wristbands, and pay per ride options. Number 6. Santa's Village It's Christmas year round at Santa's Village. This park is the definition of charming. Primarily a children's park, one of the things I love most about Santa's Village is that almost every ride is designed such that parents can comfortably ride with their kids. But even as an adult, there are still quite a few rides I love. My favorite is the Yule Log Flume, a flume through the woods with a surprisingly large drop for a kid's park. And I also love the Great Humbug Adventure, a shooting dark ride in a former gift shop where you don't shoot the bugs, but rather you tickle them and they hilariously giggle back at you. You also have some scenic rides in Santa's Skyway Sleigh and the Merry Christmas Ferris Wheel, the latter which gives a stunning view of Mount Washington on a clear day. The park's coasters are nothing special, but the park is so much more than just the rides. The park is extremely shady, with Christmas-themed statues or buildings around every corner, and it looks even better in the winter. As you'd expect, this park has an amazing Christmas event. It's called Santa's Village after all. Lights are placed everywhere, but most amazingly, I've been here when it snows, and they still run almost every ride, including the roller coasters. This is the only park I can say I've ridden a roller coaster in the snow. I also want to highlight the staff. The staff tends to be in the older side, and they're extremely friendly. Number 5. Storyland Santa's Village's main rival, Storyland is just a hair better in my opinion. And that's entirely because of Rorosaurus, the Gravity Group Jr. wood coaster that has an airtime machine. This coaster's final few bunny hills feel like the finale in Steel Vengeance. This is the third best coaster in New England in my opinion, and shockingly wild for being at a kids park. If that's too intense for you, there's the family friendly polar coaster, an adorable walrus themed coaster that winds its way down the hillside. The park doesn't have too many flat rides, but it has several transportation rides and some solid water rides. Bamboo Chutes is a small log flume on a hill with some of the most adorable vehicles out there. Dr. Geyser's remarkable raft ride looks like your ordinary River Rapids ride, but it oddly doesn't have any rapids. Instead, it uses all sorts of geysers and themed sprayers to get guests wet. Like Santa's Village, almost every ride in the park is accommodating for kids and adults alike. And the park is almost as charming. I slightly prefer the atmosphere at Santa's Village since it has one cohesive theme throughout, but all of the individual areas of Storyland look great. Plus, there are all sorts of interactive playgrounds scattered throughout the park for kids to burn off their energy. The one con with Storyland is that this park can get a bit busy and their star attractions do not have the best capacities. Number 4. Funtown USA Maine's largest amusement park is also their best. 
Fun Town is a very nice looking park. It's clean, well landscaped, and their signature attractions have little areas themed around them. The park staff is a highlight as well. They're very friendly and they're often happy to grant re-rides. And that comes in handy because this park rarely has any waits. In terms of the ride lineup, Funtown Star is Excalibur, a solid CCI wooden roller coaster with some good airtime in the first half and laterals in the second half. It feels like a less intense version of Holiday World's Raven. For non-coasters, the highlight is the Astrosphere, an indoor scrambler that feels more like a show than a ride. The park blasts ELOs fire on high, and the operators are allowed to choreograph their own show with lasers, lights, and projections. It really is a marvel. I also love Dragon's Descent, one of the strongest SNS drop towers I've ridden. Their bumper cars are also not to be missed. Fun Town has no center divider in their bumper cars, they give a 5 minute cycle, and head on collisions are allowed. Fun Town also has the tallest log flume in New England a decent wild mouse coaster, and several flat rides peppered throughout the park. Number 3. Lake Compounds America's oldest continually operating amusement park has the best roller coaster in all of New England in my opinion. Boulder Dash is one of the best roller coasters in the world, offering a frenetic ride on the wooded mountain chock full of airtime. And Phobia is New England's only launch coaster and a solid compliment. The park also has some great non-coasters in the Soaking Thunder River Raft Ride, the scenic Sawmill Plunge Log Flume, the recently refurbished Ghost Hunt Shooting Dark Ride, the snappable American Flyers Flying Scooters, and two thrilling SNS flat rides in Thunder and Lightning and Downtime. Lake Compounds is a beautiful park with a classic atmosphere and a picturesque setting with the lake and mountain, but it does have a major con. The operations. It's not uncommon to find several rides closed, and the capacities on the premier rides are not great. All coasters only run one train, and the log flume and dark ride don't run many more than that. This can result in glacial lines. But on the plus side, Lake Compounds does have a fairly long season, and they have the best haunt in New England by far with the Haunted Graveyard. Night rides on Boulder Dash are legendary at this event and the hour-long haunted house is the best I've done anywhere. This single house is better than any at Hollywood Horror Nights. Number 2. Canopy Lake Park I almost put Lake Compounds ahead of Canopy solely because of Boulder Dash, but Canopy is the all-around better park. Canopy does not have the best operations. Their signature rides have rather low capacities, most notably the one-train operations on the Yankee Cannonball but it's rare to find anything closed outside the Extreme Frisbee, and the staff is the friendliest of any park in New England. And one of Canopy's biggest strengths is that overall atmosphere. The park is gorgeous. The park has lots of shade, the scenic lake along the backside of the park, fantastic landscaping, some light theming on a few rides, and roller coaster tycoon inspired food stands. Canopy's Coaster Lab has two decent coasters in the classic Yankee Cannonball and Thrilling Untamed, plus the best non-coaster lineup in all of New England. Canopy has an extremely deep flat ride lineup with some of the best spinning rides around, most notably the classic Caterpillar, the indoor Psychodrome Scrambler, and Turkish Twist, a rotor that spins at 30 plus RPMs. You also have a decent drop tower in Star Blaster, a solid dark ride in the Mine of Lost Souls, several water rides including the Great Policy Pond Log Flume, and many scenic transportation rides. Plus, Canopy has great shows all year round, and some great haunts for Scream Fest. Canopy really is the complete package, minus an elite roller coaster. And number one is Six Flags New England. The region's premier theme park has two elite coasters in Superman and Wicked Cyclone. Superman has won the award for the world's best steel coaster multiple times, and in my opinion, it is one of the best layouts of any roller coaster. Meanwhile, Wicked Cyclone is an endless barrage of airtime hills. The rest of the coaster lineup is diverse, and it has a few other decent rides like Batman, Riddler Revenge, Pandemonium, and Thunderbolt. For non-coasters, you have some thrilling flat rides like Harley Quinn, the massive frisbee, Scream, the SS Combo Tower, Sky Screamer, the 400-foot-tall Star Flyer, and Cyborg, the indoor spinning ride. And you also have Blizzard River if you want to get wet. 
The park feels very corporate though, especially in the newer areas. But the park's main street retains the classic vibe in the park's former Riverside Park days. I also need to give Six Flags New England credit for being a lone park in New England to routinely run multiple trains on their roller coasters. Although dispatches vary wildly by ride, some have super fast operations like Superman, while others like Wicked Cyclone stack consistently. Six Flags New England also has a long season with Fright Fest and Holiday in the Park, the latter of which is quite beautiful on chilly winter nights. Those are my rankings for the operating New England amusement parks. What are your favorite amusement parks in New England, past or present? Do you agree with this list? I would love to hear your comments down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.